Hi, everybody. Russ and my hammers 11. Hope you're all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting that bell icon. Oh, I don't, I'm not bothering with any of that. We've got Julian Dix on the channel. I'm not going to do all that stuff. Anyway, um, as always, I'd like to thank our channel sponsors, Untuck It. So, you know, we've got, you can see, we've got, I don't know how really introduced Julian, to be honest. Um, you all know who he is. Hammer of the Year, four years, uh, four times. Um, uh, what have we got here? 326 games, I think, in total. Yeah, and if I'm right, yeah. all starts. You never came off the bench in the no, first no, time. I was never a sub, no. Mental, mental, mental. I think you only sub four times as well that time. Uh, 65 goals. Um, West Ham ladies, manager, obviously first team coach. More importantly, more importantly, one of my Hammers 11. There we go. It's like my Panini book. So I've, I've done Trevor Sinclair. I've done, you've got you now. Um, but not just me. Um, I think over 50% of West Ham fans we've interviewed. We've had over 250 fans we've interviewed. And, and ex-players um, all together have picked Julian and their team. So uh, I think you're the top. You and Paolo, it take, you know, it depends who we are. So, you know, that ain't too bad. That ain't too shabby. How are we, Mr. Dix? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How's everything? How's it? How's, how is it sort of readjusting now? Because obviously, you know, without the West Brom job, but obviously with the, with the baby as well. God, it must yeah, be. Yeah, the thing is, is, you don't you don't have to readjust. It's football. You know, I mean, it happens. It's not nice when it happens, but it sure. happens, and it's always going to happen to to majority of of managers. I mean, you yeah. look at Mourinho gets sacked. Yeah, you know I mean, it's. I think the only one I can think of really didn't get the sack was uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah, so, I mean, it is it is a part of football. And like yeah. I said, it's not nice when it happens, but it happens and you just have to adapt to it. At yeah. the moment, I'm back in Birmingham, just clearing out my house that I rented. So, uh, oh, God. yeah, it's, it, it, it is a part of football. Yeah, yeah. And it must be. But also in, 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 in a personal sense, obviously with the baby, you're not going to get that time back, are you? Um, watching her grow up at such an early age, so no, you're not. I mean, she's four and a half months now, um, and that's I mean, that's gone by so quick. But the thing is, I, I've got girls of 32, I've got twin girls of 32 yeah. years old, so yeah. uh, I'm, I'm starting all over again. But <laughs> it is, is don't get me wrong, listen, it's, it's hard work. I mean, anybody's yeah. got a baby, they know it's hard work, especially at night. Um, yeah. But it's it's good fun. It's good yeah, fun. It is. As you said, you got all that over again and yeah, bless you. I know, I know. It's uh yeah, as I said, I we before we started, um, obviously my one, she's eight and she's homeschooling at the moment, so it's a different type of pressure at the moment, trying to juggle work and yeah. and being a teacher. My most respect to teachers, they're awesome. Um but you know, uh, and for those of us who are West Ham fans, you know, West Ham are doing all right at the moment. So it's, yeah, they're doing well. It's all good. Yeah, they, they are doing well. So uh, and like I said, he's, he's got some good players there. Um, yeah. There's no reason why they shouldn't be shouldn't be in the top half of the table. No nah. reason at all. Not with the players they've got. No, exactly, exactly. And uh, and we beat Stockport for the first time since 1958, wherever it was as well. Isn't it? I've done an interview the other day. Um, I remember we played oh. them in the cup. Yeah, I, mean, I scored, and Ian Dowie scored a goal. Um, <laughs> we got knocked out, but um, it's good that they beat him the other night. I had this vision of Ian sitting down, relaxing for a glass of wine when that draw happened, and going, "Ah, oh, where's that? Oh, stop, put it where's that?" West that? Oh, you know, he just lived it down, didn't it? It all sort of came up again. But no, he's a top man, old Dowie. But uh, no, yeah, it's it's good. And I think you know, it's it's typical, isn't it? West Ham. You know, we we seem to get a, you know the, the team have got a tune together, and uh, there's no buggers in the stadium. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, good. yeah. That's I mean, it's obviously when we're at West Brom, it's not it's not a nice no not a nice feeling, especially like for a coach and the manager. It's not really. It don't really cause that much of a problem, but when sure. you're a player, you like running out in front of your your supporters and your fans, and even the away fans, you like running out in front of um, yeah. because it gives you a buzz. But yeah. there's there's nothing, there's nothing yeah. there, and it's just like playing a game, obviously a game behind closed doors, which we've done many times at West Ham, like friendlies and things like that. And yeah. it's like I said, it's they're sadly missed the supporters, sadly missed. Yeah, it is. It is. It's like it's yeah, yeah. and even more so, I think, because obviously at Hawthorns it's a tight ground, isn't it? Where and even at London Stadium it's a bowl, isn't it? And so it's even more seems like this. Yeah, cavernous. It's it's uh, it's very it's a very strange feeling at the moment being there. It is. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully next season. I've written this season off. 
from a fan's perspective. I think everyone has, to be honest, and it yeah. depends how quickly the vaccine comes on. But anyway, we don't talk about Corona on here. We talk about West Ham. Um, what we like to do, Junior, is like, we'll go back and sort of retrospe- retrospective look at the West Ham playing career. We'll talk a little bit about, about coach and stuff as well, because that was such a, you know, particularly the last season of bowling was, was incredible. Um Right, right at the beginning, because obviously a lot of people will know you from, you know, we have experienced and non-experienced fans, viewers on the channel, you know, the old buggers and the youngsters as well. So it's like, it's, and you sort of, uh, you know, it's, you a few generations in terms of when you played. So obviously you start, it was 1988 you signed from Birmingham. How did that happen? How did the transfer happen? What was, what was the story? Well, I was, I was at Birmingham and we were struggling at the time and it, it was a time where, you had to sell players to keep the club afloat. Sure. Um, and it was, I mean, I loved it at Birmingham. I mean, yeah. I grew up with, I mean, Tony Coton, uh, Pat Van Den Ham, Mike Dennis, Noel Blake, Mick Hartford, Martin Cool. I mean, some absolute <laughs> nutcases. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they, they, they were fantastic. I mean, they, yeah. they, they give me an upbringing that I couldn't have got anywhere else. Yeah, um, because I used to train with them when I was sixteen, and they would kick the shit out of me. And I was sixteen; these are like fully grown men, and like like Blakey was huge. Um, yeah, and they, they would, they would. If I didn't re- get that ball and give it away quick enough, I would get smashed. And um, and it was a good upbringing for me. And yeah. it it what it was, it was like I said, they had to keep the club afloat. So sure. Um. I remember John Lyle and Eddie Bailey coming down to, to St. Andrews. Um, and I went in the office with him and he said, look, son, he said, we've, we've agreed a deal with Birmingham. It's a 300,000 pound. Um, we want you at West Ham. Um, he said, well, I'll give you 650 pound a week. He said, and I'll give you 50 pound appearance. And you have five minutes to think about it. I went five <laughs> minutes. He went, yeah, that's, that's all you need. So, Obviously, I, I went to, to ring my partner at the time. Um, there wasn't obviously no mobile phones or anything yeah. like that. So I rung the house phone, it was engaged. So <laughs> I um, I went back in, I said, I'd love to sign. He went, yeah, I know you would. Um, and, that, and that was it. It was, it was done that quick. And that was on the Tuesday. I went down on the Thursday to the train. And I remember John calling me in the office and they were playing Man United uh, on the Saturday. Mm. And he said, uh, do you know you're suspended for Saturday's game? I went, yeah. He went, I fucking didn't. He said, because if I did, I wouldn't have signed you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, hopefully he was joking. Um, but that, that was it. I mean, I it, it was such a good club, such yeah. a good club back then. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it, was, it was a family club. The manager done everything. He bought the yeah. players, he'd give them their basic salary, he told them what bonuses they were on. He done mm-hmm. John done everything. Even yeah. like when I was at Birmingham and I signed my pro contract for Birmingham, the manager done everything. Mm-hmm. Um and John was John was incredible. Yeah. I mean I mean I'd, I when I I signed for uh West Ham, he took me down the Ford garage. He took me down the four garage in his jag, windows were done up, chain smoking, <laughs> took me down the garage and he took me in the office. He went, uh, this is our new son. He wants a discount. And that was it. I mean, he used to, yeah. seriously, he used to take me because I was staying in the, I think it was called the, the bearing Epping, I think. And he yeah. used to take me back after training. Because I didn't have a car, he used to take me back after training and drop me at the hotel. No, I mean that would never happen now. No. And but I mean John was John was fantastic. The, the only thing was it was a chain smoker, <laughs> and he kept his windows up. But um, he, he was listen, he was. I didn't obviously spend a lot of time with him, but he was an incredible man. Incredible. Yeah. And and that's the thing we've obviously interviewed loads of ex, lots of ex players and they speak so highly of John and his his tactics to sign. And I think Tom McAllister he, he basically gave him a blank contract. He went go and sign it. You trust me, don't you? I'll put down I'll put down all the terms afterwards. You know he's yeah. like oh, okay um, yeah. And obviously Macca he drove up he flew up to Glasgow to get Macca and stuff. No, he's an incredible uh, incredible man by the by the sounds of it. And as you said, you know 
and then and then from then on it was sort of like you know we had obviously john for so long and then unfortunately you know john got sat that season you signed and then obviously lou came in and then billy came in after that very very quickly sort of a quick turnaround what's it like as a player when a new manager comes in when you lose someone like john it's, yeah it's not nice yeah but managers come and go you know what i mean sure. like with john it wasn't nice how they treated him mm. um then lou come in and his first words to me went you're a bit fat i went you're a fucking midget <laughs> and that and that was my that was my introduction to lou um but with lou for me he tried to change too many things mm. you know what i mean the, the the good thing about Lou, listen, he made me captain, he, he did, made me yeah. penalty taker, he made me yeah. free kick taker, he then made me up for corners. Um, so quite clearly he knew what he was doing. Um yeah. but he was he was he was before his time. He tried yeah. to get people on to, to have like certain diets and things like that. And I remember Mark Ward, you weren't allowed a dessert. Mark Ward just went oh. up, picked the dessert up and started <laughs> eating it. And obviously Lou, you can't listen, if players don't you can't control them. Yeah. If players want to do things, they do things. Yeah. And we used to have like room service and I used to I used to drink Coke. So yeah. I ordered like two pints of Coke. They never come to my room. So I rung reception, I said, like, where's my Coke? Yeah, I ordered it. They went, your manager stopped it. So I went, listen, I said, please just bring me two two pints of Coke and I'll I'll sort the manager out. So they brought two pints of Coke. But that said, with with Lou. He, he wanted to play long ball. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's not West Ham. So at the end of the day, he said, right, this is what we're going to do. So we just played our own game anyway. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> when you've got people like Alan Devonshire and people like that in the teams and yeah. people like, you know what I mean? You, you just you just play football. Um, yeah. Then obviously Lou got sacked for certain reasons. Um, then obviously Billy took over. Um, yeah. I didn't always see eye to eye with Billy as a manager. No yeah um but i have the utmost respect for billy mm. as a person and as a manager and it certainly as a player um because for me he typifies what a footballer should be 100 mm. percent. yeah run through brick walls for his team um and and that was billy i mean he was yeah. a, a fitness fanatic which i didn't like but <laughs> we had our run-ins about that but uh yeah, I mean, that most respect for Billy. As much as I, yeah. as, like, what I respect I got for John, I've got for Bill as well. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. I mean, as you said, it was like, for having John so long in the uh, yeah, associated with West Ham, and then this sort of quick succession, it must have been disruptive for the for the players as well because it was like you know a lot of people obviously people signed before you have been like old school, and then Lou came in and obviously changed it, and then Billy. But um, what? One thing I want to ask, uh, it's a bit early, is is you didn't is when like pre match you never came out for a warm up, did you? No. Why was why was that? Why I, was ju that? I just I just never warmed up. Yeah. I just never I was lucky enough that I could doesn't matter what day it was, like boiling hot day, freezing cold day, I didn't need to warm up. I can come Lovely. out and, and ping a ball 60, 70 yards. Yeah. I didn't need to warm up. Yeah. And I remember Harry, when Harry became manager, he said, Look, you've got to warm up. I went, I can. He went, you've got to. So I went, okay. So I went to, to warm up and I come back in. I went, I've done my hamstring. He went, what do you mean? I went, you made me warm up. I've done my hamstring. I hadn't. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I hadn't. But I said, listen, I don't warm up. That's it. I yeah. sit in the bath. I used to sit in a hot bath with two cans of Coke, a Mars bar, and with my football boots on. And that was it. Oh dear, and that's the thing. We've interviewed people like like Mad Dog, and he said that, and I was like, oh, well, I'll, I'll ask. I'll get it out of the man's mouth rather than yeah, yeah. hear that's something. Do, yeah. yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome, and 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 it's one of those things. I mean. I mean, obviously, when Bill came in, obviously again, we went up and went down. We were a bit, we were a, bit of a yo yo club that time, um, but. Obviously, that 92, 93 season wasn't, you know, obviously, you know, Bill took the captaincy of a few, few sort of red cards and stuff. But that was obviously, that was my first season. That was my first season. And you scored the first goal I've ever seen at the bo at the bowling. Um, Oxford United 5-3, you scored one of your Julian goals, you know, like a pink. Mm -hmm. I scored one. two that day. You scored two that day. I know you did. Because yeah, yeah. Oxford, Oxford scored after about, 
after about two minutes, I think it was. Yeah. It was like, oh, you know, so it's do you, as a player, obviously 65 goals you scored, at, you know, for West Ham. Do you remember all your goals? Do you remember no. all of them? Where you, no. I remember certain ones because um, my daughter's on Twitter and, and things like that. And obviously sure. like people post um, yeah. certain goals and, and things like that. There's obviously there's, there's goals that I don't remember. I remember... The, the the special ones like beating Tottenham four three scoring two I two remember goals, them yeah. Yeah. Um, remember obviously my penalty against Man United um, but I, I remember a lot of them but I, I don't I don't remember them more no I suppose nowadays as you said with Twitter with, with Jess and stuff and like retweeting them you you sort of relive them again and you go, oh yeah, 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 yeah that was and to be honest I love looking at the, the old football and the yeah. old pitches you know what yeah. I mean your your socks roll down to your ankles and the pitches were like rub baths and, and stuff like that, and the tackles and the fighting and things like that. I love watching things like that. Well, that well, that's the thing. We said, you know, obviously the first time the first time you were sent off was the at Wimbledon game in the cup, weren't it? And when we had Mad Dog, that's his favourite ever game he played at West Ham, and it's because of that brawl and then your tackle on Dennis Wise. Yeah, um, that's why he said it. Do you have like a a favourite game in those three hundred and 26 games no not Six really i mean i remember beating tottenham one nil yeah uh, at tottenham i mean i think it was slab's first game i think it was his debut slab and i think darnie scored danny or darnie whatever you call yeah. it um the, the ugly kid that's the one that is um, dog ugly um, earlier, man. Yeah. i mean i i went to, to volley it and he, he like he got his head down and, that, and we beat tottenham one nil which is for west Ham, it's a great result yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and then we beat them four three at home yeah. Um, then we drew with Man U 2 2. I mean, we're, we're 2 0 down within like 25 minutes. All the thing, fuck, we're going to get battered here. Yeah. Because, I mean, they had like Cantona, Skulls, oh. Giggs, Beckham, King. I mean, they they, they were that such a good team, team. Yeah. such good players. Yeah. And obviously, then Harry bought Reda Choyer on, who, who scored a great goal. Then we got a penalty. So, uh, cert certain games stand out yeah. more, more than others. Yeah. And and when it comes to penalties, obviously, you know, was it, I think you only missed four at West Ham in, in 39 or something like that. Um, and obviously, you know, we'd had Ray before at Tonka and he would hit it hard and you would hit it hard. Why don't, why don't people do that anymore now in the modern well, game? They try and dink fair, it. I, I used to play, try to place mine and I missed yeah. one. And I said to myself, I'm never going to do that again. Yeah. So that's why I always hit them as hard as I could. Because for me, if... You're a professional footballer. You should not miss the target from 12 yards. All right, yeah. you can hit the post, you can hit the crossbar, sure. but you should never miss the whole target. Yeah. Um, and I believed in my ability that I had, that I could hit it as hard as I could and still hit the target. Yeah. Um, I remember we had one against Shepherd United that hit the crossbar and banks just before the halfway line and, and they got a corner <laughs> from it. Um, <laughs> I remember Alvin telling me that not not so long ago. Um, but yeah, that's that that was my that was my mindset. I could hit it as hard as I could and get it on target. Then the keeper has to make one hell of a save or just jump in front of the ball. Yeah. So yeah. And that was it. Yeah. Or well, as you said, all, like that like Man United game where Michael got a hand and it still bent back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, uh, it's it's one of those things, isn't it? It's, uh, like you see it now, obviously, West, when we played Fulham the other day and uh, Lookman dinked it in the last... It's like, oh, God. Oh, yeah, that's uh, Oh, what a shame. What a shame. Yeah, what a shame. Embarrassing. Yeah, it is embarrassing. It is embarrassing. But then, obviously, for you know, some people who who, who know, know, don't necessarily know the story, Jim, obviously, then um, then Harry came in and and then eventually he went, went to Liverpool. And then Harry brought you back very, 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 very quickly after him. Yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? Because I remember literally the back of that, I see it on the back of the newspaper, and I was like, "What? He's coming back? You know, he's coming home?" Yeah, but I, to be fair, I didn't want. I know, no disrespect. I didn't want to go to Liverpool. Yeah, sure. I mean, don't get me wrong; they're one of the biggest clubs in the world. I didn't yeah. want to go. I was happy at West Ham. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then I thought, well, because Harry said to me, "Like, if you want to go to Liverpool, I can get you a move." So I'm thinking, obviously, something's not right. Mm. Um, so. That that was my again. That was my mindset. That obviously, some you you want me to go. So I thought not yeah. a problem. So I went and met Graham Soonis, who I love to bits. I yeah. met him, and and for me, he's another one that goes with John and Bill. Mate, he was an incredible person. Yeah. Incredible, 
person. Black was black, white was white. There's no gray areas. Yeah. That is it. Um, so as soon as I met him, I went, yeah, phew, I want to sign. Um, and I signed for, for Liverpool. Um, didn't have the, the best of times there. I had a couple of injuries and in, in things like that. And mm -hmm. um, obviously Graham resigned and Roy Evans took over. We didn't really see eye to eye, which, which happens. I mean, yep. I'm not... I'm not that naive, but which happens. Um, and I remember playing against Everton in a reserve game and TC was playing for Everton. Um, he went, I'm going back to West Ham next week. I went, lucky bastard. <laughs> I went, then about, I think, it must be about a month later, Jamie said, listen, my dad wants you back at West Ham. I went, yeah. that's it. I, but I remember Roy Evans calling me in. He went, Birmingham want you on loan. I went this, I'm 25 years old. I don't want to go on loan. I just want to play, be settled, play football. Yeah. He called me in again. He went, Tottenham want you. I went, fuck off. He went, no, I'm serious. I went, so am I, fuck off. <laughs> so, um, and walked out. Then he called me in, uh, like I said, a, a month or two later. And he said, uh, Harry wants you at West Ham. I went, no, but I'm gone. Yeah. I'm gone. And that was it. So it, it took, it seemed to take like, for months and months and months, but I think it took about six weeks in the end, but it seemed to go on forever. Yeah. Um, and it was, for me, it was just, it was just coming home. Yeah. It was just coming yeah. home. And like I said, I played for Liverpool against West Ham Upton Park. We won 2-1. Um, I also played in Bobby Moore's Memorial match. Um, yeah. And I was still at Liverpool. Um, mm. And it, this, I, I, Every interview I do, and they ask me about Upton Park, it's just, I play for Birmingham against West Ham at Upton Park, and it's the horriblest place in the world to play football. <laughs> Honestly, mate, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. But when you play for West Ham and they like you, yeah. it's the best place in the world. Yeah. Best place yeah. in the world. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. It, is, it is an incredible place. Mm. But it was an incredible place. I went back. Yeah. Uh, about a year ago and obviously it's flats and things like that so for me is is heart-wrenching to be honest looking at yeah. the place now mm. um because i, I mean i had whew, 11 years there and they were they were fantastic fantastic yeah. exactly and and but as, as you said you know it's um you know when you said you, you came back and, and stuff like that i mean how many <laughs> i was interviewing a guy the other day and his mum used to give him a clip around the ear because basically he wanted to be like you so for Chris, so christmas or birthdays he'd get the west ham shirt the first thing you do is rip the collar what was it about that his collars julian what was it, what was it about well, his collar? to be fair i've got quite a big neck i mean i've got a 17 <laughs> got... and a half inch neck um and they were quite tight on me so yeah. the first start they would they were just like like rain so I yeah, used to yeah. cut it. Yeah. Um, and Eddie Gillum, our, our kit man, it wasn't the case like it is now. You get two shirts every game. Yeah. It, that shirt, you had a long sleeve and a short sleeve. That's the last year. So I used to cut it. Next week, it'd be sewn up. <laughs> so I, I would cut it again. It's only because it was so tight. Yeah. Then we have one with have buttons on. Yes. So if you're trying to chest the ball, you got me just, just whacking like yeah. a button into your chest. So I used to cut them off. Um, again, Eddie Gillum didn't like it, so next week they, they would be sewn back on. <laughs> um, so that, that was that was it, it just it re, it felt restricting, yeah. So that's why I used to cut it. So, yeah, <laughs> countless, countless mums were, were twatting their kids behind the ear because they'd rip their shirts off to be like Julian. Um, <laughs> and then, then obviously, you know, then, then obviously, as you said, Tottenham and then um, you know, injuries and, and stuff like that, and then. Uh, then obviously you finished playing. Was it ninety eight, ninety nine season? The following year you had that testimonial where it all kicked off, um, <laughs> the Bill Bauer game. I remember yeah. that very well. Um, it, it couldn't be a Julian Dix testimonial without a bit of no. And <laughs> the thing is, I didn't, I didn't want to play Tottenham. Not like this is no disrespect to Tottenham, but yeah, every West Ham player was playing Tottenham, and I thought yeah. I just want something different. So. Atletico Bill back, they were over here at the time. Um, and my agent at the time, Rachel, got in contact with them. And I had to pay them 35 grand to, pay, to play, to play in a testimonial. 
Um, and I, I remember people going, how, how can you charge so much for tickets, blah, 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 which, which I understand. Yeah, but yeah. they charged me 35 grand to, to play them. Um, and I thought, I want it because it's different. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's different. So obviously it happened and it all kicked off. And what happened, happened, happened. And I remember Paolo coming in and I was, I was sat there on my own. He came here, went, Julian, I'm sorry. He said, oh, I've been sent off. I went, fucking brilliant. I love it. I love <laughs> it. It's it brilliant. So he was, uh, he was, he was, to be fair, he was, he was gutted that he got yeah. sent off, but I was happy. So, yeah. and it was my <laughs> testimonial. I love it. I love it. Then obviously the playing career stopped and then, then obviously management, then, then West Ham, West Ham women's uh, 2014. That must have been a nice surprise when that, when that job was offered. Well, by Slav, you mean? No, the before when you was at West Ham women. Uh, when you were... The ladies. Yeah. The ladies, yeah. The, is, the ladies was, they were, they were nothing to do with West Ham. They, nah, had, yeah. they had the name and, and yeah. things like they wore the kit and things like that, but they, West Ham didn't supply them with anything. No. Um, obviously, but when I come in, a few things changed. We used the mm. training ground and we got bits and bobs from, from yeah. West Ham and things like that. And I loved it. It was, it was really good. I'm not sure they liked me that much. Um, <laughs> because to me, football's football. Yeah. You have to be fit enough to play. Yeah. Whether you're yeah. a woman, whether you're a man, whether you're a child, you have to be fit enough to play football. Um, and before, before me, it was a bit of a jolly up. Yeah. So I've gone in and... I mean, I've, I've let them have it a few times in, I mean, verbally. Um, yeah. So a few people left, a few players left and things like that. But the, the ones that stayed there, um, they, I mean, they, 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 it was good. It was good. Yeah. I mean, we got to a cup final, we finished six. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it because yeah. I used to say to them, like, you're running tonight. They go, well, how far? It wasn't a case of oh for fuck bollock shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It was how <laughs> how far. And, and and that was it. I mean they they yeah. everything I said that I want them to do, they tried to do. Yeah. So yeah. It, it proves it because I think the year before they, they finished one from bottom. They did, yeah. But we finished six and we got to a cup final. Yeah. Alright, we got battered in the cup final, but we got still to got to a cup final. final. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it was good. So, I, I really enjoyed it. And then, then as we said, alluded, then obviously the call came from Mr. Billich to join the first, the first team uh, coaching yeah. staff. Yeah, I mean, I I was Slab's room partner when he came. Okay, we, yeah, we were room partners. He used mm. to make me coffee, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we used we used to smoke. We used to drink like on the Friday night. We used to smoke and drink in our room and, and things like that. And I got on really well with Slab. Um, and yeah, I mean, when I got the call, his agent rang me and said, listen, Slav's got the West Ham job. He wants you, he wants you there. Um, I said, I'm walking now. Yeah. I said, I'm walking now. So, and it, it, it was, I mean, again, like obviously coming back from Liverpool, um, like I said, was coming home, but yeah, going back as, as a coach. Didn't have the same feeling. Sure. I, I'm not going to sit here and lie to people, but it didn't have the same feeling. Yeah, but yeah. it's the next best thing. Yeah. I mean, nothing for me. Nothing comes close to, to playing football. No. Nothing in this world comes close to playing football. No. Um, but it is the next best thing. And yeah. um, and like I said, first season we 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 done superb. We done superb. It, it, and it just it, it seemed that season the stars aligned. You know, we had Billich, we had yourself, and the last season at at the bowling. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was the perfect send off. To be honest, it, it um, was. It's like I said. It's you, you, you're moving from a ground that's iconic. Yeah. So, what happens is you get one of the biggest teams in the world. Yeah. And you beat them. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, you you beat Man United three two. Whatever yeah. people think about Man United, they're one of the biggest clubs in the world. Sure. Yeah. Um, and they come to Upton Park. Um, obviously wanting to, to, to spoil the party, yeah. but last, the, the, the day, I mean, we left the hotel and usually it takes about 15 minutes. It took about 45 minutes to get there. Yeah. We couldn't even get in the car park. We had to jump off the coach and walk. Um, it, it was, it was, it was incredible, incredible, yeah. incredible day. 
I can imagine. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I remember that game so well because I was on jury service that week, and uh, <laughs> I wasn't on court. I was I was I was one of the jurors, and uh, yeah, I think our court our, our court day was like it was pushed to the afternoon. So I drove up there really early, parked down Barking Road, and just had my pass and just walked around. There was no one there, and it was just like a, such a privilege. I actually had a wee in the play in the in the changing room, just to say, just to say, I didn't have a poo. I didn't have a poo. Yet. I, I had a wee. I was respectful. Should have had a dump in the Man United one, but um, no, yeah, it was uh, it was just that was just as you said, it was a fitting. It doesn't it doesn't usually happen for West Ham where things work out? Do you know what I mean? It's no. always that, you know. But that game, as you said, it, it was it was the perfect send off um, to to it that. Was, and obviously, it was incredible. And the fact that you know that we had to delay everything and we had to put the fireworks at the beginning because we were Man United couldn't we delayed everything. It was just all West Ham. It's just so such a West Ham the whole day and the whole evening. But uh, we had Jeff from the Cockney Rejects, and he was almost electrocuted because it was pissing it down, wasn't it as well? So, oh, it's just I love it. It was brilliant, man. But they wanted me. They wanted me to get out the, the taxi. They, they I know they did. Went, I went, fuck that. I know they did. <laughs> I did. I didn't want to ask. I didn't ask, but I know they did because I was part yet. of that. Crew. I, went, no. I was part yeah, of that. Have to. I, went, I don't have to do anything. No, no. You, 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 you didn't get out of the taxi. Billy turned around because he was worried about his his family in the yeah, taxi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. We had these two spare taxis. You know, like oh, this poor guy's on the meter and everything. You know, it's like no Uber drivers, no black cab ones. But yeah, no, it was a it was a fitting tribute to. That to was the, incredible. Around. yeah it was lovely uh, and obviously taking and obviously you know you took the the team to the to the new stadium as well i mean that must have been must have been just strange different yeah I say. yeah yeah yeah. it was i mean like this and all, all i've ever known is in west ham is upton park sure yeah yeah like i said on here it is i can't explain how in words how good upton park is mm. as a west ham player Sure. To go out there um, and the fans, I mean, I, I, I just can't, I can't put it into words. Um, yeah. So the day, obviously, when we beat Man United, it was great. It was a fantastic day, but we knew that was it. We're never yeah. going to play like a professional game. There. Obviously, we have Mark's testimonial, yeah. um, but we're never going to play another professional game there. And mm. it was, it was heartbreaking. Yeah. It was heartbreaking. Mm. And it still is. Like I said, I went there not so long ago and it's it's flats. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. It is, yeah. I know what you mean. And it's it's it, as you said, it's it's for the uh, yeah, unfortunately, you know, unfortunately your, your daughter, for example, will, will only know West Ham uh, play at the London Stadium, same as my daughter and stuff yeah. like that. And it's um it's one of those things where it's it's a shame that it's it's flats because it would have been nice to have to have still had some, you know, a little bit like hybrid where they still have the the sort of the shell and yeah. stuff like that. But it's happened now, isn't it? It's changed, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's changed isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's changed. Um, you spoke about obviously all the great players you played with, and obviously we do this Miami's eleven. And that's to be honest, people people love you, Julian, but I think they probably skip a few because they, they like to find out about the players that you played with. That's what mm-hmm. they, that's what they like to do. And I said every ex player, the only one, the only people who haven't is Harry Redknapp because he started chatting about you know harry redknapp stuff you know about about the old days with moro and stuff and <laughs> bobby ferguson as you can imagine and stuff like that and uh and bish bish didn't do an 11 because he didn't want to piss anyone off um right. as you can imagine with bish that's just him right so we try and do a 442 job you can change it you can you know you're, no you're, no 442 is good for me nice and good okay right so who's going to be in goal for the dicks 11 i mean it's, for me that that was a tough one it yeah. was either phil parks or ludo I mean, I played see more games with Ludo. And Ludo was an incredible goalkeeper. Yeah, I remember we were we were in a pub, and Ludo's English wasn't great. No, so <laughs> I said to him, "Tell the man to fuck off." <laughs> he went, oh, "Fuck off!" And, <laughs> yeah, but Ludo was like six foot six. Yeah, you know what I mean. And he was, uh, but I mean, uh, that was such a difficult one. Phil, for me, Phil Parks just beats Ludo. Yeah, because Phil yeah. was. A great goalkeeper, mm. but even in training, you're playing five aside, you couldn't score against him. No, you know what I mean? It's just like sure. and that's why you always want to be on this side <laughs> because we used to play for a fiver at the time, and like whoever won would give all the money to like security man on the gate and things like that. So we always used to play one on Parks' side. So if, if we did, then we, we were guaranteed not to pay out. So, uh, yeah, Phil just does it for me yeah and obviously he shares the same birthday as you yeah 
Yeah, lucky man. He turned seventy, and he obviously you, you turned you know fifty two. Uh, he turned yeah, yeah, seventy, yeah, didn't he? Too. So yeah, fair play. Right, okay. Let's go. Let's go. Um, the back four. Who is going to be left? And you can pick yourself, Julian. Oh, I am. Listen, of course I'm, you can. It's myself. Yeah, yeah yourself. Myself, <laughs> we had, Captain Penny Taker. Everything. Do you know what we had? Gailey did his. Uh, Reg did exactly the same thing. He was like, "I'm going to put myself first team coach, uh, reserve team coach, physio chef, <laughs> and football, and captain." Football yeah. players are arrogant. Yeah, you know I mean, so, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I yeah. mean, for me, yeah, I was, I was always going to be left back. So, yeah, um, but for me, left centre back would be Rio. Yeah, sure. Uh, Rio was obviously as a young kid um, learning his way and, and things like. That. But he was, he was a player that was very confident in even at a young age, very confident yeah. in his ability and things like that, and rightly so. And he was, he was a good sure. player. But I remember we played Everton once, and Big Dunk just smashed them all over the place. Yeah. Um, and after that, I think he, he probably thought, Fool, hang on a minute. Like, this is like proper. So, but he, he, like, his career was, was fantastic. But at West Ham, he, he, was, he was a great kid. Um, and he was such a good player for West Ham. Mm. So for me, that, it goes with Rio. When you're, when you're training and like, these youngsters, obviously, we had that relatively golden period of, of, of young youth when they start turning up and playing in the first team like training yeah. do you can you spot a good one guy oh, he's, he's he's not gonna yeah, do it yeah, he's, of course you can. yeah 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 but there aren't to be fair at west ham at the time you if you trained the first team then you were good yeah yeah you know what i mean and no disrespect to, to the to the other lads there wasn't many that would train on the regular basis sure with the first team you might need yeah. someone to to make the numbers up and they might go oh yeah you come over here yeah but obviously you had like obviously rio you had frank you had, you had joe cole you know what i mean you had some yeah proper proper players there so yeah, for me yeah rio you, you could tell rio was going to be a good player yeah okay i'll right, we'll put rolls royce the rio in okay who's going to be the the right center back then alvin yeah alvin martin's gonna be my other centre back. Alvin was, again, he was very confident on the ball. I know I remember speaking to him and he said, when I first started playing, he said, like, the fans used to abuse me and things like that. And yeah. he said, I didn't really think I was going to make it and, and stuff. But for me, like, when I played with Alf, Al was, like I say, he was another one. For me, it was a, it was a Rolls Royce. Yeah, you know, he was yeah. very confident on the ball. He would chuck his body in front of the ball. He would make last bits tackles and things like that. And he was, and he was a proper captain. Yeah. You know what I mean? He would he would he would let you have it if you needed to. Whether mm. that was in the dressing room, whether that was out on the pitch, whether that was in the pub, <laughs> wherever, <laughs> you know what I mean? He was he was one of them. So uh yeah, I mean for me, Alvin, all day long. Yeah, top man. Okay, right back. Who we gave right back then? Ray Stewart. Yeah. Yeah. But he did he didn't take pennies, so yeah. Um <laughs> but Ray Ray was a a very good player again yeah. obviously because he, he's in the 11 he was he had a great right foot he could ping balls 50 60 yards he was he was athletic he was he was fit he was aggressive yeah. well he was scottish so he was aggressive yeah. Yeah. um so yeah for me he was like obviously i didn't play many games with ray but what i seen was was a, a, a very good very very yeah, good sure. player yeah, definitely. Right, okay, we'll put, put Tonks in. Uh, but you're on penalties, so I'm just making a note. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Just, in yeah. Case any, just in case there's any sort of, you know, like Frank Lampard, Di Canio, sort of like in, in Bradford City fighting over the ball. So we're just making a note now to so save save any uh, any arguments later on. Okay, let's go into midfield. Uh, left midfield, left left wing. Who are we going to have, mate? For me, Alan Devonshire. Yeah. Um, I mean, Dev was... I can you say Incredible. Yeah. You know what I mean? When, when I went there, he was struggling with his knees. Yes. But he was still, I mean, I, like when I did Q&As, I always go, like, I never used to like playing with Dev because when I ever give him the ball, he'd never give me the thing fucking back. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he, would just, <laughs> he would just beat people for fun. You know what yeah. I mean? Just for fun. And he always wore yeah. moles. The pitches we used to play on were awful, but oh. he always wore mulled boots because his, yeah. like his feet, but his balance was so good. He'd come off, he would be spotless. Yeah. You know what I mean? He would be spotless, but like for, for his ability um, and for his for his dribbling, he was, 
Yeah, I mean, for me, yeah. left midfield, incredible, incredible player. Considering yeah. he only cost five grand, I think, oh, from so, a yeah. non-league team. You can't get a second, second-hand Fiesta for that now, can you? Yeah, really? Exactly. I mean, he, he was, he was unbelievable. And yeah. I, I didn't play in his best times. No. You know, I mean, I was playing yeah. towards the end of his career, and he was still, he was still incredible. Like yeah. And I think you you, you, made, you mentioned about the, the pitches. Obviously, we played when we had Stockport the other day. You know that the pitches were a little bit sodden, and I was like, you know, uh, come on, you know, yeah. You saw, uh, you know, I remember we had Macca and Macca maybe watched the four nil when they beat Chelsea and on, on the Stamford mm -hmm. Bridge Tampi, yeah. and it's like, come on, you know, these guys don't know they're, they're so spoiled, aren't they? With all these nice pitches and a bit well, of rain. They are. I mean, at the end of the day, it's been great. <laughs> I mean, I remember playing at Old Trafford, and right down the middle was just mud. Yeah. So you have to get the balls up on the wing to to go anywhere. To go anywhere, yeah. But yeah. It, like I said, it, nowadays it's, I wouldn't say their sport, but the, the pitches are, are magnificent. Yeah, I mean, some yeah. of the pitches, like the boys play on that, like Brighton and things like that. What, yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable pitches. They are. They so are. Just indeed. imagine how Dev. That's how what I mean. Dev could you imagine? Could, would be. Yeah. But same way, I wouldn't mind, because obviously we had, um, Barama was a bit, couldn't do any of his flicks. I'd love to see like a Messi or a Ronaldo on that bog of a pitch at Old Trafford and see how good they are yeah, on that yeah. pitch. I mean, yeah. vice versa, because yeah. I don't think they'd be able to cope, to be honest. But um, anyway, we'll put put Dev in. Um, yeah, lovely bloke. Um, right, let's go right wing. So the other side. Who we have on the right wing? Mark Ward. Wardy. One, well, because he, he's an <laughs> aggressive little fucker. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> Like I said, I mean, he was, he had a great, I mean, superb right foot on him. Yeah. A great right foot on him. He was aggressive. He didn't matter who you were. He would like, he would stand up to you and he would like have a scrap with you and, and things like that. So, uh, and he was a great player. So for me, yeah, yeah Wardy, like, with obviously with Ray up and down the lines. Oh, yeah. All day Beautiful long. stuff. All yeah. Day yeah. Beautiful stuff. And yeah, so you got a, you got a Scott. And a scouser on the wing. There we go. <laughs> That's asking for trouble. Right. Central midfield. He's going to be the first centre midfielder then, Julian. I've got Billy Bonds. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a West Ham team without Billy in it, to be honest. Yep. If yeah. there is, I don't know why. As I said to you earlier, for me, he typifies, from my point of view, what a footballer should be. Sure. Yeah, he 100% every single game. Um, run through brick walls. <clears throat> I mean, stand up for his teammates if it all kicks yeah. off. Um, and and that's what Billy was. Listen, for me, he didn't have the best ability, but no, no, it's, yeah. he made up through his his heart, his passion, mm -hmm. his pride, his love of love of West Ham. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I, again, I didn't play many many games with Bill. Um, obviously, but I see him train, and I played a few sure. games with him. Um, and he's he'd probably be my my all time player at West Ham. If I had to pick yeah. one player who who I went, yeah, I want this player. It would be Billy yeah. because of of how he was. Mm. And similar to Bill, obviously, Bill never played for England, and yourself never made it get a full full cap as well. It's something about and Parks. He didn't get as much as he should. Have. You know, it's like it's something about West Ham and their jewels. It's something about West Ham man and, and England. Well, yeah. Well. Anyway, anyway, it's because you had a bald head, wasn't it? That was what it was. Um, is that true? That story is that true? What, yeah, what? yeah, that's true. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I know he denies it, but it's true. Because <laughs> you haven't got to, nowadays, you could you could do a yeah, you could record it on your phone, isn't it? But uh, oh, that's mental. That's mental. Oh dear. Anyway, um, like Bonzo's in. Who's going to be the, the, the next midfielder? Liam so, Brady. Brady, nice shout. So nice obviously, shout. with Billy, with. All his like aggressiveness and things like you got Liam, who's very cultured, great left sure. foot. Um, so Billy could do his tackling for him, um, yeah. do his running for him, <laughs> um, which he would be more than more than capable of. But Liam, yeah. yeah, I mean Liam was just an outstanding footballer, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean every time that I played with him, he never used to sprint anywhere. But he always sure. had like five or six yards around him so he could just control the ball and, and do what he wanted. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, for Bill, who was a bit of a warrior, um, for Liam, obviously for his cultured left foot and his ability. 
Yeah, fantastic. Nice pairing. And it's funny, even before then, obviously, you got your Bonzo and for that, obviously Brooking, and and very similar. You said to both people describe Trevor Brooking as a player, always have time in the ball, would never be the quickest player. And, and Bill would be his enforcer. And so, you know. Yeah, I, but I, I do Q&As with Bill and, and Trev. Um, yeah. And Trev does say that. He said, like, he said, I never used to tackle. He said, but Billy yeah. used to look after me. So, <laughs> I love it. So it, sweet. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. So sweet. Right, okay, up front. Who's going to be your first your first striker then, Julian? Um, TC. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, just because, obviously, he's just an out-and-out goal scorer. Mm. That that was it. I mean, like yeah. his finishing was superb. Um, didn't work particularly hard, but as long as he's scoring goals, you don't mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for me, TC. I mean, I, like I said, I've, I've got people like John Hartson. I think John was like a magnificent player. Yeah. You know, what I mean, absolute superb player. But for me, TC would be there because obviously his, his goals that he scores, the tappings. That I don't. I don't care. If they're from six yards, seven yards, eight yards, nine yards. T- I don't care as long as you yeah. score goals, and that's what yeah. TC used to do. He did, yeah. That's what and sort of the, and and the road the road TC that sort of that is that sort of fox in the box type striker. Don't seem to get that in the modern game anymore. Now, do we? It's all forwards and you know, yeah. I mean, the only one that you you maybe go f- is Aguero. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. he scores. I mean, don't get me wrong, he scores fantastic goals. And so did TC. TC yeah. scores some goals from from outside the box. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I was going to pick a player to score goals, it would have been, t- it will be TC. Yeah. Yeah. And who's he going to, who's the, who's the last piece of this, this Dick's pie? Is his partner, McGavenny. Yeah. I mean, I, I love, I love Frank. I mean, I still speak to Frank. Um, for me, Frank used to work his nuts off. Yeah. You know I mean, as, as a, as a striker, he used to chase the right back run past TC, <laughs> chase the left back. Um, <laughs> but he used to work his socks off and he used to like a drink and, and stuff. It's, you know what I mean? It's back then it was, it was, we used to go out, we used to like socialize and be like, but Frank was, Frank was a, a good player. He was yeah. aggressive. One again, he was Scottish. He was aggressive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's obviously scored many goals as well, Frank. So, but for them to, as a pairing, yeah, yeah special uh, for me and with, with them too. So special pairing, special pairing, and and you're right. It's like that sort of era. So we've been speaking, to, speaking to lots of those the players from that era. So just you know, and that sort of bond, team bond togetherness. You know, going out for a drink. I mean, even we've had you know, people like Trev on here and Sinks and you know the, the Tuesday clubs and stuff like that. It's um, it, there was there was a real sense of camaraderie. It seems in in. Uh, for all they, across all those generations in those teams, uh, and obviously they can't do it now. Uh, they can't do they, they, obviously they can't do it now. Literally can't do it now. But you know, so before all the restrictions, you know, that sort of team bonding, um, it, it seems something something lost in the modern game. Yeah, but they, they can do it if they want to. Yeah, but they yeah. choose not to. Yeah, you know, what I mean, it's not. No one says they can't go out and have a drink. Yeah, I mean, we weren't allowed out on the Thursday or a Friday, like. If we're playing on a Saturday, um, I only done it once. Um, <laughs> You're on that, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, you have to go. You have to. You have to bond. Um, yeah. But the thing is, football's changed now. Yeah. Like you yeah, said, true. we we used to have we used to have a speaker in the in the dressing room, and the players used to say, "We didn't used to have headphones. You Good know, what I mean? we didn't used to have mobile phones where they could mm. listen to their music. So we had one speaker, um, and and that was it. That that was our music." But now who would, who would you who would you usually pick the music? Who was the who was the who was the DJ? Yeah. You? <laughs> well, I'm, I mean, at the time I was into Guns and Roses, but yeah, play, players used used to put on what they wanted. You know, what I mean, yeah, it sure. wasn't the case. But like I say, players have the headphones and they sit there yeah. and in their little cocoon and, and things like that, and they they listen to what they want to listen to. Gotcha. Um, yeah. But it is. It's just like, like I said, like. like an hour before kickoff, it was it was good to be in the dressing room. Mm. I mean, the music was blaring and, and things like you have a laugh and a joke and, and things like that. It was uh, it was it was it for me. It was it was good times. Yeah. I mean, I I thoroughly enjoyed my 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 eleven years at West Ham. Obviously, the best of my footballing career. Like eleven years. 
Yeah. I enjoyed it in Liverpool. Didn't really work out, but loved it at, at Birmingham. But my 11 years at West Ham was... It happens. I think it happens at certain, not, not very often, but occasionally when a player and a club just work and the fan and, and you and West Ham and the West Ham fan base just worked. It, it was instant. Yeah. I remember making my day, de- my debut away was against Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. And I got man of the match from their sponsors. Okay. We got beat. I got man of the match from their sponsors. Then we played my home debut was against Everton. And I remember elbowing Trevor Stevens <laughs> and the fans going mad. Yeah. And that was it. From that day, that, mm. that was it. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, for left back isn't a particularly glamorous position, but you know, yourself, as you said, it might have been, might have been a. An, an, an... I, but I wasn't a left back when I was at yeah. Birmingham. I, I was like an inside left, which was sure. like a number ten. Um, yeah. And at the time, we we only had one other left back, was Brian Roberts, who used to play for Coventry. Mm. And the next game we were playing was against Man City, and the manager at the time. I think it might have been Keith Leonard, might have been the interim manager. He said, who wants to play left back? And I went, yeah, oh, go on, I'll play left back. <laughs> and I played left back and I stayed there. That was it. I stayed there ever since. Yeah. And for me, if you're going from strike or midfield backwards, it's easier because yes. everything opens up for you. Mm. But once you go from like maybe a defender to a midfield player, maybe to a striker, is is a bit more difficult. Um, mm. but like I said, I, I had a good left foot. I could, I could, I could play football and, and things like that. Um, so for me, I loved it. I mean, it's probably yeah. it happened. Things happen for a reason. Yeah, totally. I get it. You yeah. Know I mean, things happen for mm. a reason. Um, and I'm glad it did. I'm glad mm. it did because if I, if I would maybe been in, in like number 10, things might have been different maybe sure. i wouldn't well i wouldn't have been at west ham yeah you know what i mean i wouldn't have, i wouldn't mm. have signed for west ham because they wouldn't have wanted me as a number 10. Mm. they wanted me as a left back so like i said everything happens for a reason it does doesn't it yeah yeah, no, it, no, yeah. i truly it's believe that, that it's those sort of sliding doors moments in people's lives isn't it and that, that as you said going yep yeah, i'll go left back that then yeah. Kate, you know, a 14 year career, 11 years at West Ham, 320 or game. You know, it's it's funny, isn't it? What you could, if you didn't be out at that day, who knows what would have happened? No, who exactly. That's that's like I said that things happen for a reason. So that's all good. Julian, man, it, it, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for chatting. Hey, you're um, welcome. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. As I said before, I, I, you know, as I said, you're one of my 11, so I've got, you know, that's two. That's two knocked off. I've got a few more to go on those, but uh, yeah, but um, thank you so much. And obviously everyone, would love, everyone would love it. Thank you so much. And obviously everyone to, who's watching or listening, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm a bit, and I'm, a, I'm a little bit awestruck. I'll be honest, Julian, a little bit awestruck. What's it like actually knowing the fact you, you must know that there's loads of people who like idolize you as a as a player is it is it is it weird is it weird no it's not well i suppose <laughs> it is it is in a way but there's also a lot of people that fucking hate you <laughs> you know what i mean they're, they're, one they're, hand giver the other take it away yeah <laughs> yeah but that, that's that's the thing and, and i, I remember it. when i had my pub in, in langham in, uh, yes dog in langham. we used like Supporters used to come in, like they might be playing Ipswich, they might be playing yeah. Norwich. We'd have Tottenham supporters come in, we'd have Chelsea supporters come in, you know, Charlton or things. Like, and they go, hey, When you play for us, he went, I oh, fucking, I hated you. I hated you. <laughs> and you go, well, Yeah, but I understand that. They said, yeah. But I would love you to play for my team. Yeah. Which to me wow. is that, like a, a massive wow. compliment. Yeah. Yeah. A massive yeah. compliment. Um, so, yeah. But, for every person that likes you, there's also someone that dislikes you. But I love it. Like I said, it's oh, football brilliant. is what happens. It is. It's a game of opinion, isn't it? It's a game it of is. opinion. Yeah. But anyway, thank you so much for your time. Um, uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, from me, Russ, take care. Oh, I can't. I'm, 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 I'm a bit, to be honest, I'm a bit sort of, woo, I've just spoken to Julie Dix. Um, anyway, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. And for me and Julian, much love. Come on, you irons. And we'll see you again very, very soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Much love.